Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd It's important for the Muslim to know how to properly make ghusl or properly, properly wash themselves and prepare themselves for prayer after sexual impurities, meaning after they have had sexual relations or that the man or the woman have ejaculated Allah or whatever has caused them to have uh, orgasm. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon us. And this is related to the purification of prayer and returning to our dars in basic fiqh we reach the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Prophet uh, is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat kana rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha aqtasala min al-janabati ghazla yadayhi thumma tawadda'a thumma tawadda'u wudu'ahu lis-salat ثم يخيلل بيده بيديه شعره حتى إذا ظن أنه قد أروى بشرته أفاض عليه الماء ثلاث مرات ثم غسل سائر الجزره رواه بخاري ومسلم وقالت كنت أغتسل أنا ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من إناء واحد نغترف منه جميعا and that was the narration of Ruahu uh, uh, Bukhari wa Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he wished to take a bath from Janaba, meaning as we mentioned Janaba, this is from having uh, either after having sexual intercourse or sexual relations where the man or the woman has ejaculated or even if they haven't ejaculated that is still the hukum it, related to a man and a woman if they have relations then even if they do not ejaculate then the Muslim has to make ghusl you still must wash yourself the ceremonial bathing of Islam so the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he wished to make ghusl from Janaba, then he would wash his hands. Then he would make the wudu for salat. Then he would take his hands, his hands would be wet, and he would take his hands and it would go through his hair until it would touch his skin until he felt that water had touched his skin and he would do this three times then he would wash the rest of his body and that was in Bukhari and Muslim in the other narration which is also Bukhari and Muslim Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she said that I used to uh, take a bath myself and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam from one water vessel and we would both take from it. And that's in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith, there is many, many benefits. And some of the benefits that the ulama, they mention, is that, as we, we've already mentioned, that it is legislated that a person must wash themselves from Janaba even if they did not ejaculate. Allah. So regardless of whether sperm came out or not, or for the woman, the women's uh, having the fluids that come from the women, regardless, it is still just the fact that they had sexual relations, then they are both required to make ghusl. And another benefit of this hadith to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that this is, in this narration, it shows us the complete ghusl, al-ghusl kamal, referring to that this is 
if you've made ghusl in this way, as I, in this hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that you will have the complete ghusl from Janaba, meaning you got the sunnah, you see the sunnah. That you follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what does that mean? That means that there is what's called ghusl kamal, and there is also the ghusl uh, the ghusl kamal is, is following the sunnah, and then there's just the ghusl of meeting the basic requirements of ghusl. As many of the ulama, they state that it is sufficient, for example, if a person makes their intention, they, for example, get in this river, for example, and they make their intention, and water touches uh, all over their body, and they wash their nose and their mouth, then that, that's sufficient. That is ghusl. That's the uh, basic requirement of washing yourself with ghusl. But if you want to follow the sunnah, then you will also accompany it with wudu, and you will start on the right side in the other aspects of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you will receive extra reward. But just as a bare minimum, so that you know the basic hukum or the basic ruling, if, for example, you were in the sea, you were on a ship, or you're out in recreation and you needed to make ghusl, it would be sufficient for you just to have your niyyah and jump in the sea, wash your mouth and your nose, and come out and you have, you're now prepared for prayer. Another benefit of this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the second hadith shows us the permissibility of the husband and the wife to view each other completely. Ikramakum Allah. Meaning that a man and a woman, a husband and wife, they can take showers together, they can bathe together. And this is in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why is this important? Because in some cultures, they deem it very uh, out of their shyness and, and so forth. They believe that it is haram to look at your wife or to see her with no clothes on or what have you, akramakum Allah. Even so much so that some cultures that all through their married life, even when they have relations, they have the lights out and they do not, they've never seen one another uh, and, and one another's body parts, even the face, even to that extent in some of the Arab cultures, and this is true and I know many people and even some of the ulama have mentioned this to me in Saudi Arabia, that certain parts of Saudi Arabia and certain parts, uh, certain cultures, that the, men in the, the, the man has never ever seen his wife's face. That when they have relations, they have their clothes on, they, you know, with the lights off and they do their, uh, Allah have their relations and the man does not, has never seen his wife wife. This is extreme and this is not from Islam and as we learn from this hadith it shows us it goes against the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam and his wives like Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha as she's mentioned in this hadith that they used to bathe together sometimes and they would take from the same water uh, the water container so when you bathe together of course Akramakum Allah then you are uh, you don't have clo uh, cl without clothing. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us that after washing the private parts when you're going to make ghusl, then you should proceed with washing the parts, make a, a, a wudu, make wudu, your regular wudu that you make for prayer. And then you begin to wash the rest of your other sides of your body for ghusl. And as the as another hadith of, uh, of the Prophet وسلم, will illustrate for us that the Prophet وسلم, used to do it like that, that he would you know wash his private parts and then make wudu, then wash the rest of his uh, wa wash the rest of his body. And when he made wudu, he did not wash his feet. So he would wash all the way, then he would make ghusl, then he would wash his feet last, alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is apparent from another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And when we 
uh, study that hadith we will bring the details of why the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam why he did it like that Those are just some of the benefits of this hadith and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.